Hugs. It's just a hug time. Yeah, it is. Catherine Bohart. Hi. Hey. Hey. How are you, Helen? I'm good. I'm actually really excited for today's episode. Me like, too. Not that I don't enjoy chatting with you and Andrew, because you know I do. Andrew. Why do I feel like there's a butt coming? I'm hoggling. I just, I'd <laughs> rather have Fan Brady here Wow. Too, all the time. You're so rude. I Endlessly rude. I love yes, her. You're right, though. She's absolutely amazing. And Fern Brady's going to be with us later. And we... I gotta tell you, every chat with Fern is good, but it's a good chat. But I feel like because we get this special time together, it's yeah. almost like when you're in like a female friendship of three, and you're like, let's have just the two of us, and then they can come along. Do you know what I, I mean? I felt very much like as with you, as you do with all guests, it was you and her against me. What the fuck? I feel like you take advantage of the triangle to exclude me on purpose. Okay, well, let's let the listeners be the judge of that. I think we should. Okay, Fern Brady's coming up, and <laughs> you can judge if you feel at any point that Catherine gets let out of the conversation. No, not left out. Just actively picked on, I'd say. Actively picked on? What is our dynamic if not that, Helen Bauer? Love. <laughs> Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah. Problems and they will solve them, or maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Are you in a happy mood today or something? Yeah. You're not on your period, are you? I'm literally finishing. That's what I... Oh, you seem peaceful. You know what it is? It's because, yeah. like, I know my moon cup is not getting filled. <sighs> I just know. You're nicer to me this way. Feels good. I like Feels it. Feels really relaxing. An empty moon cup, but a full Catherine I and also Helen. I think I had a very successful weekend. So tell I feel about, good for myself. Tell me about you know? your weekend. It was just like, you know when you're thriving? I don't, but tell me about it. I was thriving. I was I'm, thriving. You know I'm not thriving because I'm wearing the most patterned dress I own. So <laughs> yeah. it's very compensatory. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Do really oh, bad yeah. things I put in the biggest earrings. Everyone's like, what's her truth? I know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm depression. wearing shit loads of lipstick, it's not a good week for Catherine. You do have lipstick on. Yeah, let's do. you th- want to hear, do, should we do your bad week before we do my no, good week? No, my week's been fine, but I want to hear about your thriving. No, it sounds like you're really depressed. Oh my God, we'll get to it in a moment. Tell me about your thriving weekend. Okay, so I had a gig in Hereford, which, right? So it doesn't sound like the beginning of a great thriving weekend. No, it doesn't. Lovely, lovely gig. Amazing stuff. And I've died in Hereford before, so it was so lovely to go back oh and have God, a lovely time. Oh, God, it's lush to turn something around because it's easy to get in your head that a location is just a place you don't do well in. I had a well point to in. prove. I had a point to prove. That's gorgeous. But it doesn't always go that way. Like, True. I think there are some places where I, I've thought, you know, this is the time and it never is. So mm-hmm. good for you for turning Hereford around. What happened? What was different this time? A, a different venue run okay. by really lovely guys. Wow, so shade anyone to the is last in venue. the Hereford, no, seriously, massive shade to the last venue. <laughs> um, even though it was 100% me and not them as well. Like, I was also dog shit. I guess the difference is this time it was a great venue with good people. Seriously, uh. farcical <laughs> comedy in Hereford. If anyone lives around Hereford, go to that night. They curate oh. such fun bills. I know Bobby Mayer's doing the next one, which is probably like next week. Oh, this week isn't a fucking or... ad, Helen. Really, so good. So then I was like, but I was like, oh shit, I've got, you know that 10 o'clock train back from Hereford, which goes through every single stop. Mm-hmm. You're getting at 1.20 a.m. <gasps> so I was like, okay, I'm in for a long journey back. Arrive in Hereford, message from comedian Ray Badron being like, I'm doing Hereford. He was doing that gig that I don't like there. <laughs> and he was like, are you on the 10 o'clock train? I was like, fucking amazing. Got on the train, so met lush. two guys who had just been at a whiskey tasting in Worcester. <gasps> were they hammered? No, they were fine. Yeah. I had I had like one glass of wine, one beer, and I was like, oh, where's the whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> Started a combo with them, tried their whiskey. I said it was peaty. They were impressed. No. <laughs> I don't even, I can't say just handle that. I get that. And then Ray said something about coffee barrels and Japanese Japanese whiskey. They were charmed by us. Wow. It was amazing. Got back and then Saturday had two gigs in London that were both lush. And then I threw a drill party on Sunday. What the hell is a drill party? Okay. This is where I think my weekend really shone. So on Sunday. Are you talking dance with drums? No. I'm talking drilling Black and Decker. What? Heckler and Kosh. (laughs) What's a Heckler and Kosh? What? That's not a drill, is it? No, I think it's Bosch, maybe? Bosch. Bosh it. When in doubt it, bosh it. I Are you know. talking about fucking? No, no. I needed to get... Are these euphemisms? <laughs> What's happening? Did you get drilled. I have been trying to get four coat hooks up in my hallway 
for about a year now. Why did that involve need to involve a party? Because I have been hammering in screws to oh a plaster no. wall. So they Hell go no. up, they fall down. Of course they do. And it's just it's been an absolute nightmare. I really hope my landlady never hears this. It's just an She's absolute gonna see it's it, a Helen. sea of holes. No, because I've plastered them. <laughs> Oh, fine. As long as so you've you made... With you a see, kitchen knife. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound right. But you, as long as you've made good, it's I've fine. made good. We're fine. And then I was like, watch something on YouTube. Have you heard of raw plugs? Raw plugs. I thought they were called wall plugs, but they're called raw plugs. Andrew, what the hell is she saying? Raw plugs. Okay, raw fine. Plugs. Okay, fine. W... Do you mean like the oh, yellow... Pla- the yellow... Oh, fucking hell! Do you mean the yellow plastic ones that just go in the section... Mine are red. Okay, fine, but basically something that sits in to hold a screw. Exactly. Now, to get yeah, that's that right. in... I've dated lesbians. I, don't want to, I bought I don't a set of them about three months ago and was trying to hammer them in. Oh, that's so you're just chipping away works. at the plaster, making the yeah, hole bigger and bigger really and bigger. Really big, really big. You need to have a drill. <sighs> now, I'm not buying a drill. I'm not falling for that. That's fucking bullshit. I know my friend Will's housemate owns a drill. Now, I can't ask Will to get a drill off his housemate and come over with Why it. Why not? Because it's, it's pushing my luck. I think that's pretty straightforward. And actually, no, it's like, can you get the... this drill, bring it over, return it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I'll come get it. And then I was like, no, actually, guess what's happening on Sunday, Will? I'm throwing a drill party and you're invited. Make him feel special. That's a trick with boys. Make him feel special for no reason. Then invited his best mate over, who has a wall scanner, to join the drill party. Then got in Neil O'Rourke to join the drill party as well. Because Neil loves a party and he had an Indian takeaway. So he was very happy. Threw a drill party. Sorry, but it was just... awful because we forgot drill bits. Okay, can we just... <laughs> okay, can we just circle back? So... Rather than just ask your friend, may I please borrow your housemate's drill? I throw a party. Or indeed, buy a drill that probably costs less than catering for the four men you invited to your home. They got their own takeaways and brought them to mine. Okay, you instead constructed a party of basically like random men who don't know each other that well. and we won't have boys. Ha- They're won't- all good friends. Okay. And then casually mentioned that they should bring tools with them. If yeah. they felt like it, like no biggie. And also do the work. Okay, but you got no drill bits. So what did you do? We didn't have any drill bits. So the drill Wait, party started drill? with only a drill with nothing at the end oh, of it. God. So we were like, oh, this isn't good. But we had a scanner. So we spent a while scanning our bodies to see where you could drill into. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. And then we, we thought it'd be really funny to pretend was for it a while the obvious that it was a jizz monitor. There it is. To see who was fertile. Nice. nice. <laughs> So, so did the code hooks get put up? I was, well, the drill party started with no drill bits. So I was like, right, we need to go to Will's house, which is like a 20 minute walk away to get the drill bits and then come back. But his housemate doesn't get up until about three o'clock. Uh-huh. So we were like, okay, we need to wait. And then it was, we were getting to the point where I'd nearly got all the baby boys with their backpacks on ready to go for, to get the <laughs> drill bits. And then as soon as that happened, Sunil arrived One back from Birmingham. He stopped at uh, Tim Hortons in Birmingham and brought us back uh, Tim bits, the little donut balls. So then the whole party gets derailed with all the baby boys gathered around Sunil and him handing out little donut balls. In my head, he's chewing them and popping them into his ma- into their mouth. Yeah, like a baby <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just there standing at the door being like, this isn't the drill party I wanted. This no. isn't what I was promised. We eventually make our way towards the pub. But as we're going towards the pub, we run into like three different groups of friends. So we're constantly having to stop and talk to people. And then we're talking to this table of like lovely people, the guys that run like the pinata comedy show. Don't know what that is. And a friend of mine, Lewis. Like just good Don't people. And I was like, we need to get the drill bits, guys. And they were just all bantering. And I was like, but we, seriously, the drill party has just gone fucking mental. Hang on, are the three men you invited over all comics? Yes. That is, honestly, trying to move male comedians through space <laughs> is is like herding cats. And it's then, like, yes, you could do another little bit. Aren't you a very clever boy? Let's move it along. And then we finally get, we pick up the drill bits and then... Eddie gets hungry, I need a wee, and we're like, oh, this is a nightmare. So instead of like actively searching for things anymore, I was like, fuck it, I'm leaving, I'm getting a pint. So Eddie went to get food, I went to get a pint, and Neil came and sat with me while I had a pint and needed a little, little tap water for my baby boy. I'm genuinely so stressed by this story. Can you just tell me that it got resolved and that you got the coat hangers up? Eventually we got home and we got the four coat hooks up and only one of them is still wobbly. <laughs> That is not a good story. All I'm saying is if you want to get DIY done, don't throw a drill party. Have you heard of Handyman? Yes, I have now. Yes. I'm a big fan. Yes. They're great. Yes. They basically do magic. Yes. Um, I have a handyman. He's the handyman who used to work at the last property I rented for their for the rental company. Classic. But he liked me so much because I used to always give him biscuits and tea. But now he does my handyman stuff for free. But you're charming. I am do quite you nice see, girl. Like, 
people want to do things for you because I charm. don't know why he does it for free though I worry that he he have you fucked him and you no, just don't remember it no no I think it's um I know I definitely remember I think it's one of those things where he he feels like a father figure like I'm so, I'm so clueless that he's like Oh, I'll just take care of it. But then I also worry because he's Iraqi. I wonder if it's like that taxi thing in Iraq where like I'm like, let me pay you. And he's like, no. And I'm like, OK, but I'm supposed to be like, no, let me pay you. But I don't want to argue too I much with him because it is free. I think him. I think I try. So does he come over and like put up things for you? Like hook? Yeah. Because I can do everything myself apart from he's if put I don't up have the tool. He's bolted cabinets to the wall. <gasps> he's like, oh, I'm, I'm Why? Pro- you afraid I should pro- of earthquakes? I should probably pay him, shouldn't pay I? Pay him. I know I should, it's just my, my flat's on it's or sort of a throw slant. him a party when he comes over to do it <laughs> I don't think that's the way do it as we, long as everyone brings the tools it can be a very successful I day I do think I should pay him but then what the problem is I'm then ballparking because he won't give me a figure so like what are we paying people to like bolt something to a wall what's that fee I, it shouldn't be that much should it I, I mean I'm sure I it's don't a power know, hour thing mm. Well, Helen said she could get Helen to do it. She said she can do it as long as she No, has I'm not. It's horrendous and very strange. We only messed up four times. <laughs> that <sounds laughs> That's terrible. not bad once we have the equipment. It sounds awful. But we were also That's a, a no bit drunk me. by that point. That's a no from me. Okay, well, you've had a busy week. Yeah, it's been amazing. That's a lot. Um, Annie, so that's you thriving, is it? Yeah, I got four coat hooks up. That is thriving as far as I'm concerned. That was a job that I've been looking at for so long and I was so proud to do it. But we, we've got a really dusty hallway still because neither of us are willing you know to vacuum. You real... What? Why wouldn't you vacuum? Because Sunil brought the vacuum down. He's like, I'm going to do it. And I was like, yeah, you should do it. Should and now we're at a stalemate. Party. No, Andrew. <laughs> no. You're so right. Just vacuum. vacuum pie. Just um, me vacuum. and my friends once did a um, wax Helen party, and this is like a couple of years ago. <laughs> what? And I went to their garden, and um, garden. we were like racing. It wasn't. It was like a remove all the hair on Helen day, and I was in their garden, basically naked, and one of them was epilating, and one of them was waxing on either leg. We were just like, this would be a bit fun, just to fill a day, you know. It was very painful for me, actually. <laughs> I was there just like smoking and drinking like, oh, this is a horrible day. Sorry, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. First of all, your parties are extremely gendered. If you go Second back on my all... Instagram, you can find it if you go back enough. <laughs> They're incredibly gendered. Secondly, are you telling me that you went to somebody's garden, got my friend out, whacked says. out your garden and, and then Alice, whacked yeah. it? Did they do your actual lady garden? I think we went just for bottom legs. I think we were planning on doing the whole thing, but then we realised that it is not fun for me. You, it took you doing that to realise that wouldn't be fun for you. Yeah, and also their gardens, like it's like it's like South London gardens where there's like no wall between the next garden. It's just like a little mesh fence. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there were children yeah, yeah, next yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Bloody weird. Kids. It's weird. It's weird <laughs> because you um, you initially said you were thriving, and I felt like oh, I sh- I should be thriving. I'm still and thriving. And then you told me the story of how you were thriving, and now I actually feel like it is in fact I who am thriving. <laughs> but you don't have four coat hooks up. Did I mention the coat hooks were from Etsy? I didn't. They're I, from I, Etsy. I do. I just don't think of that as a huge achievement. So maybe I would be thriving even more if I lowered my stand. Yeah. Why also, didn't you say you messed up four times and there was four coat hooks? So yeah. you messed up every single one. No. Well, I was in charge of... <laughs> Eddie was in charge savage. of putting the hole in the wall with the drill. And I was in charge of putting the raw plug. <laughs> <laughs> Fully get, how do you spell it? I, like I, raw I, dogging. Is it? A- R-A-W. I'll Google it. Because I thought it was wall plug. Andrew, can you please Google that? We'll do a check. There's some There's some people listening to this going, oh my fucking God, it's called this. And oh my God, why but won't you But basically, Hoover? wall plugs come in different uh, sizes. R-A-W-L. Raw. 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 Oh, can you, you know understand it, how I struggled it is with also that? Also known as a wall plug. That's what I fucking said, and they were all like, "No, it's a wall plug." You can't I'm sending a, a voice note to them. Okay, so it's like brawl roll. without a B. Yeah. We're having a roll party. Oh, that's exciting. That's a, a roll diff- brawl. You could have gone for. Oh, it could have been a roll Eddie, brawl. Eddie, I'm doing a podcast, and we just Are googled it, and it is a wall plug as well as a roll plug. You can't do voice notes, and we're on the podcast. I've done it now. Like Thank the you. Third time you've done this. That's not acceptable. <laughs> I want to make sure my point. Helen, new rule. No, my new voice rule. Notes. What is it? Don't do a voice note during the podcast. And what is your phone meant to be on? Aeroplane mode. Thank you. Shall we focus? Yeah. Sweet God. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had a good week. That's exciting. I'm so pleased. What would you say um, you're... Like, we're obviously getting into winter now, which yes. I'm really excited about. Yes. It sounds like 
you've achieved <laughs> hence loads. the coat hooks um but Here's my question. I'm getting to a point where I know it's the third week of October, but are you starting to feel like, and I had, basically, I called my mother at the weekend and she was like, I finished my Christmas shopping. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't even started saving for Christmas presents. Never mind, bought the Christmas presents. Um, Is that... But what's the expectation on you as far as Christmas gifts in the family vein? Like, do you all do gifts for each other? Well, we do a Chris Kindle... So we all pull. On, do you not? You know? all, they all buy each other a Kindle. <laughs> no, you know what a Chris Kindle is. No. Oh, were you like all, a Secret Santa? Yeah. So we all put our names on the hat, we pull it out, and we get that person. And then there's a limit, 150 pound, 150 euro limit, I think, uh-huh. on that, um, which uh, is fine because we're all adults. But um, then my mother also still does stockings from Santa. Cute. And then she just buys for everyone anyway. So then it sort of ruins it. So then you all have to sort of like at least buy for her and then like couch for like extraneous gifts. And then, but then also I think I put too much of a standard on myself to get all my friends presents when I kind of wish we could all just agree that we don't have enough money for that. But we can. I do a couple of friends and yeah. I usually do everyone gets sort of like a similar vibe. Okay. So like last year, I like bulk bought loads of photo frames and then got everyone like a, a photo nice photo memory of me. <laughs> me with them. That is sad, but that was the gift. <laughs> no, you did not give all your friends a, a photo of photo. Of us, of us, like together. Okay, it wasn't just of you. My friends Francis like, and Alice. In case I go missing, got, here's a photo of me. Pictures of like the three of us in Disney together. Okay, cute. And okay, stuff. Cute. And like my friend Gwyneth got, actually she's still haven't given it to her. That's from Christmas last year. You could reuse this year? Gwyneth, you have got a picture of the two of us on your 30th birthday coming your way. Oh, nice. Lucky you, Gwyneth, if you care about that. She cares. Okay, cool. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. But I do, I think, um, yeah, I think a lot is expected of me in terms of gifts. And I think I also have set myself such a high bar. Yeah. I, I think I go too much and then I have to keep it up and I feel a lot of pressure with it. Which yeah. Is really, it's a really hard loop to break. Um. Uh, but so, yeah, I'm quite anxious about it, but it didn't ha- not help by my mother, who's such a Christmas obsessive being like, it's all done. And also, it's never all done with Geraldine. Let's face it. Well, so you've got to pay 150 euro on one family member, but you also have to do presents for your mum, and then you also do gifts for all your friends. No, you don't have to get presents for my mum, but okay. she will get extra presents for you. So it's like, do you love her or are you a bad daughter? You love it's like, her. You know what I mean? That's the thing. And the thing about Geraldine as well is she'll always say, Christmas shopping done. So she'll finish in August, first of all. <sighs> then she'll finish in October. She's absolutely done by October. She's done, done. She's done. Oh, my God. And then she continues to buy. And you're like, bitch, I, how am I supposed to keep up with this? Like, it's just, she's, she just loves making other people happy. She's such a giver. That's and it's, really sweet. It is really sweet, but it's also a trait I've picked up on. And the problem is, and so is my brother, like brother and sister. And I think the problem is we end up giving more than we actually should and kind of damaging our own well-being because we're all trying to be so kind to each other. Anyway, that sounds like a, oh, we're so nice. But I just mean like we overspend. Just to put it in context, my family, we've done stockings off and on, but they're pretty much over now. Maybe yeah. this year will be different because last year none of us were together because of lockdown. That's and what we I think. All... I think it's going to be an overcorrection this year because my so mom missed maybe, me. Maybe, but we have definitely, like, as soon as we weren't, like, living at home anymore, then it was immediately, like, stockings out, one present each, and it's on a secret Santa, but also done with, like, a couple of my uncles. So, like, I'll just get a message from Uncle Jerry being like, you've got to spend £20 on your dad. <laughs> And I'll be like, oh, okay. And that's it. It's just sort of done over WhatsApp. And then also like food, we all bring one dish each. Like no one's in charge. That's very smart. I think I might suggest to my mother that we lower the Chris, the but we Santa really budget. don't do Christmas vibes. Like I did try when I was younger to make it more wholesome. Yeah. But last Christmas, it was me, my uncle Jerry and my dad, while my mum was in the other room, watching uh, my neighbor, the Nazi, the story of John Demjanjuk. Wow, Do- I would six-hour documentary. No, mine's pretty. F- that's intense. Mine's full-on Christmas expectations. Mine, that's intense. But I'm sorry, I'm still. Process- I loved it. I fucking loved I'm it. I'm still processing <laughs> what you just said to me. Um, and that's- also, what's great is that Jerry and Michael Ooh. and me were all mouth breathers. So it was the three of us sitting on a sofa watching about this uh, Nazi who might have been Ivan the Terrible. A hundred percent was at Treblinka death camp on Christmas Day, going. 
Oh, what? The, the listener can't hear that. There it is. Okay, great, 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 great. Oh my gosh, I would say we have a different vibe. Happy Christmas, Daddy. We have a different vibe. Our vibe, because of course my dad is a deacon, so yeah. he, so Christmas is huge. It's a big part of his job. Big gig. And so Christmas Eve has always been. Um, my brother, sister, and I cooked dinner for my parents. Oh my god! But I'm a control freak, so it's me. Although actually, my brother's a really good cook now, so we might have a bit of a battle of will. And yes, then, Peter. Or we can maybe just work together. Mm-hmm. And then um, Christmas is huge, and then, yeah, it's a lot. But I also, I also love it. I you do. You are a, like I a fiendy sort of person. Oh my god, I love it so much. Like I love decorating my flat. Yeah. I love hot chocolates. I, I love get it. wrapping gifts. Mm-hmm. I love thinking about what people might like. Mm-hmm. I don't love the poverty that I experience in January and February because I've overdone it. Um, but I also find it really hard to have those conversations with people when you're like, should we just get each other reasonable things or not? Because I want to be Santa. I feel like... I want to be Santa. Just be harsh with who is worth it. But I don't think it's... Wait, that. I think I it, do you want to have a discussion? Are we doing gifts for each other? Oh, um, uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. But the thing is, we can have this reasonable conversation because here's the thing: we shouldn't get gifts from Andrew, but Andrew works much harder than us, so we should buy Andrew, Andrew a gift. If you're getting you know me mean? gifts, I will get you gifts. That's the thing; it's so yeah. tricky. Yeah. It's so tricky. It's like a, it's such a thing where it's like, what you want to show up? I ca- from December, I carry around a generic gift in my bag in case somebody I'm not expecting to give me a gift gives That's me a gift. That's fucking tragic. That is really sad. No, but no, it's not. It's not because but what's a generic <laughs> gift that can suit everyone? It's like a candle or a soap and a book. Whatever the top seller. But you've given me what? a candle before, so no, that was that a generic was, no, random it wasn't. gift. No, it wasn't. But you know I, I take what, great... So what happens if you're like not expecting to see them and they're like, oh, you're here. Oh, that's fantastic. I've just got this gift for you. And you're like, oh, well, I was just carrying around this gift for you. Yeah, you say, you say oh... Oh my god, that's so mad! I have yours with me. No, that's definitely no one's gonna believe that. that. That's no one's mental. Gonna believe that. No, okay, no. If I just ran into them, I wouldn't. But I would then make a point of seeing, getting one for them next time. But if right. the, if you but think if I... that they're gonna give you a gift and they don't, you don't give them the gift. Exactly. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so this sounds like she's being really nice, but it also means that you are only being generous when they have shown an act of generosity first. This isn't yeah. a sweet thing. No, 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 no. I just keep the like number one fiction book that year and uh, like and some maybe some chocolates or something. It my bag in case somebody I don't expect gives me a gift so that I have something to give them in return. The only right because I'm not going to be caught out on the hop like some sort of horrible like they, I they, feel like no, our no, generation hang on, hang on, we can on. argue no gifts because of environmental reasons. Go. I, I agree, but hang on a second. They have worked. They've like thought of you, brought you a gift. They met up with you knowing that they're going to give you a Christmas gift, and you just go thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't return a gift to somebody who gives you a gift for Christmas. It depends on, depends the, on the gift, yeah. yeah. And the gift. I would be absolutely mortified. Well, that's why I would return a gift to you. Because I know you'd... You... I would be mortified. That's I just write down the little gift bag, Merry Christmas, kiss, kiss, no name. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Don't you know, though, who's going to give you a gift? Like, I know yes, which of my yes, friends... Yes, I do mostly. I make a list, and that's... But, but that's why I... The idea of of being wrong, of misjudging it, means I have one just in case. Do you also do Christmas cards? Um, do I post Christmas yeah. cards? Only to the elderly in my life. I think that's the one good thing that's happening with Christmas as far as generations go, is that like we're really letting go with the Christmas card thing. Because yeah. I think people used to do a full day shift. Oh, my, my parents do it together. So they sit down at the table. My, my dad writes half, the first half, and then... My mom's there putting mad. them in envelopes, licking them, putting the stamp on, and then they switch. It's mad. It's yeah. pure madness. Yeah, and also it takes like, a whole day. The round robins, did your family ever do that? Oh, those letters about your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a very... This is what happened to us this year. No, we don't do that. I love them. I, they... I love no, them. No, I wish we did, but we oh, don't. Helen had another abortion. <laughs> <laughs> Michael drove her this time. Funnily enough. I was a book club. (laughs) You know what? Irish families don't go in for that. Can you believe? What? Yeah, we don't do an abortion Christmas roundup. Oh, I forgot. You guys are funny about that. Well, no, I'm not. But like, yeah, it tends not to be like. No, but the round robins are always like, and guess what happened? Our little girl got into university. And I was always like, I'd love if my family did one. Like, there was one year where like my brother went to jail twice. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh I, my gosh. I decided to stop attending college and didn't write anything in any of my exams. Nice. And it's like, what would my mum and dad write? Like, our marriage is failing, Ted's in jail again, and Helen, well, we wish her luck, but we're pretty sure she's about to share a room with her cousin for a year. And it's true, <laughs> I shared a bed with my cousin for a year. Like, not like, you know, not actually. Yeah, I, don't, I think there would have been some awkward years to do the roundup in my house as well. Like, completely fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, having to do one Christmas where one of your daughters came out and then a, a couple of years later be like, oh, the fucking other one did as well. <laughs> like, that's like, that's t- tedious. Um, but yeah, I think, I, no, we don't do them. We don't do them because that seems very American to me. To be like, it does, but as I'm PR saying, to your family, you know what I mean? Like, I think I might do a Christmas round what Robin newsletter. I, I think was, you should do one too. Are we not doing it right now? Is a that, year in my life. A year of my life. No, it's not for me. Um, but yeah, I, my point is I'm feeling a lot of Christmas pressure. And if you're feeling Christmas pressure at home and it's already only October, um, try to channel it into what I've been trying to channel it into is like stuff I can make myself. I don't know like, why you're doing this. Cause me and Andrew clearly weren't feeling Christmas pressure. And now you've put it on us. And now you're like, but if you are feeling Christmas pressure, I wasn't. But now I am. Okay, I'm sorry. But if you, Are you but if you were, now's a really good time to go out and forage for dried leaves while they're still on the trees because those are falling. And um, before it gets too rainy and they're all gone, because you can use them as little um you can punch a hole in them and let them dry out, and then they become really nice little labels instead of It just of gets Christ- sadder and sadder, doesn't it? I oh, honestly what? don't know what to do right now. <laughs> what? what? I, I can't work out if she's doing like a bit or No, you can use serious. them as labels on gifts. You tie them on with a ribbon. <laughs> and you can write with gold pen on you a dried can leaf. Buy- <laughs> I'm in saving the environment and money. I Andrew. just sharpie onto the wrapping paper. Why are we doing labels? What? You sharpie on the wrapping paper and you just put Dad, <laughs> Gerald, too, yeah. Philip. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, you could also dry a nice brown leaf out and use a gold pen on it, <laughs> and then use a pole punch and put the ribbon through that, and it holds. Andrew, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Also, you can take olive oil and um, if you've washed the leaves and dried them, you can take some olive oil and cover a board with them and then place cheese on them at Christmas. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fuck you both. <laughs> I'm trying to save the listeners some money and get, give them a thoughtful way to channel their anxieties. Sharpie and wrapping paper sounds cheaper than that. Yeah, it looks awful. Because it doesn't. It does. Well, it's clear. You it know? looks awful. And also, is your wrapping paper recyclable? Another important question over which you can have anxiety. Well, is cling Largely film recyclable? It's <laughs> 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 a good question, actually. It's a good fucking question. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, oh, so God. if nobody else is feeling this way, there's a bunch of people listening being like, it's October, shut the fuck up, Catherine. So I will. Yeah, I feel like you, no one had anxiety about it, and now yeah, they do. I'm, I'm so sorry. I've, I've, uh, I didn't mean to bring that upon us. Anyway, Halloween's around the but corner. But I feel like we also didn't sort out the fact that, like, are we doing gifts for each other then? Shall we all do it? How would set, you like? Set a limit, like a how would you I think we should we should do it on the podcast. In how like, would you both like the best-selling fiction book this year? <laughs> <gasps> yes, <laughs> and some chocolate. What is the best-selling fiction book this year? We'll, fi- we'll find out closer to probably the top. probably where the crawdads. Probably Richard Osman. Osman. Yeah. Oh, oh what, yeah. What, what year is it, Helen? Oh, is that old? <laughs> no, but it's not like recent. Oh, I only just read it. Okay. I always assume if I've just read it, then it's just come out. Where is but it? that's you not how things work. You should definitely Have assume. you heard of 1984? <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Very good book. Um, Let's say like 20 each. Oh, by the way, we haven't... We, what we ha- okay, fine. What we haven't mentioned, by the way, is Andrew just showing up, having been sick and not apologising for being absent. I'm, oh yeah! I'm what so, time do you call so this, sorry. Andrew? I mean, what time do you call this? Previous episodes. I, 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 well, would you rather I gave you potential lurgy? I mean, that. What sort of a lurgy? Yeah, what are we talking? I know I just woke up feeling really horrible, and like I sent you a voice note to like show off. Oh, we, oh, we, we already discussed it. Last it. Time. Yeah, 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 it's actually right. fucking absurd. Yeah. I've not listened back yet. Uh, yeah, I um, I was, I just really felt. You horrible. didn't listen to the podcast. You weren't on. Is that what you're saying, Andrew? Well, no, I will eventually. I mean. Oh. My God, he's rude. I haven't listened to them yet. You don't listen to our own podcast. That's fine, I think. I don't listen. I think it would be weirder to listen back to our own podcast. That's like reading back your own diary and being like... I (laughs) did once go to listen back to an episode of a podcast I was on because I had quite a few messages about it being like, oh, like, that was amazing. Like, thank you. But like, kind of emotionally heavy ones. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, because I never, like, I'm just not that person. Like, I can't... If you've got like a trauma and you share, I can't handle it. Like, just I'm not that person. So I went back to listen to it. And the first three minutes of the podcast 
is the host being like, had a great chat with Helen. I really thought she'd contact me saying she didn't want loads of this stuff in, but she hasn't, so I guess it's all <laughs> fine. And you know when you're like, immediately, del- I can't listen to it then. Yeah, I don't I, think I'm that's fine healthy, with though. It. I don't think it's healthy, too, because I think, like, if... For most people, like if they said, oh, I happen to have a recording of a conversation you had with your friend when you were drunk the other night. Do you want to listen? Absolutely not. That sounds horrendous. And why would you listen back to a podcast? And I would say I like I prefer to spend my time listening to like um, exes or people I've slept with on podcasts instead of um, that's an option own, for you yeah, though not all of us have that as an option it. yeah it's nice it's nice actually I did um, sleep with a guy that has a podcast yeah and it's good to like yeah. listen and then sort of read every, read into everything they say and then be like that's probably about I still me. haven't listened to it well there's a little uh, something you can do if you to can. ruin my life yeah, yeah if you're feeling, <laughs> feeling bad about yourself on a mega bus why not engage in that behaviour get in yeah. a lovely bubbly bath put on a potty <laughs> oh no because it gets I get the anxiety sweats so not in the bath not the time I like too sweating warm. in the bath do you remember this is really weird do you remember that phase where everyone said um if you want to lose weight you cover yourself in cling film and get in the bath what that's really i'm un- not joking it hit our school quite toxically that's terrible and it's something to do with the sweat that doesn't seem right how do you get out are you not like trapped no it's fine you still you still supple enough to move i mean it depends on how tight you do it i just did it on my legs and I, it was quite a fun sensation, I won't lie, but I don't think it's healthy. Horrible. It sounds like being boiled. Yeah. It was a little bit, actually. Boiled yeah. The bag, Helen, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Oh my God. Being that was sous vide. So good. Done in five minutes. <laughs> 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 That's horrible. I don't like that. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, I no, I don't listen back. I genuinely feel like I wish I had more news for you, but I've been kind of just gigging loads. That's good that you've been gigging loads. It's nice to be back gigging loads and it, it being is. like, a thing that we can do again. It is. It's nice to get to a point of gigging where, um, I mean, I feel like we're talking just comedy. But, but don't you also like crave TV now gigging us back, like those relaxing moments? Because I was getting bored of TV. Oh, you mean watching television? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, Helen. Somebody does TV and I was like, I just craving a TV gig. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no I, was like, I was like, um, uh, yeah, I miss watching television. I Listen, we don't, we're all surely at the point now of return to normality where we're like, but like four weeks long. So this Terrible. is why me and my housemate yeah, no. have started watching SAS Who Dares Wins. The celeb one? Nope. Oh, is there, is there a Normies one? We're watching series one from like oh. back in the day. Of th- I mean, Normies, yeah. One of them's a comedian on it, which is so exciting. Incredible. Which, who is it? We don't know him. It's quite okay. annoying. I think he's an Australian comic, so we okay. don't... What's his name? Mick something. Okay. Has, obviously hasn't stopped. He's really lovely. I'm uh, sure he's very funny, but I just we haven't come across him. I'm watching Meredith for a sight back. Have you watched it? Me the British too. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But I'm only like 10 episodes in. Oh my God. See, that's something it's where like during lockdown, I could have done with another one of those. Yeah. Gives you structure to your week. Absolutely. It Whereas also gives now, you people to feel superior to. So when your life's not going well, it's well, like you these think you're better than them. You think you're better? I think that a lot of those people are toxic. Those dynamics are toxic. And I wish that somebody would just pull them aside and say, You deserve better than this. Who are you talking about in particular? I'm talking about um Luke. More agonly. I don't look, it's absolutely fine that she's not attracted to him, but I think there's a point at which, like, in order to to make contort himself into who he thinks she wants him to be he's having to become someone he isn't yes if you don't watch the show this is very niche um and i just but i just think oh god that shouldn't be allowed yeah i also think like there's a couple of dynamics where they're borderline abusive to each other but that's what so much of the reality tv is is really like toxically abusive moments and i'm not saying that it's not awful but they do pick a narrative and then edit it that way oh of course like i do the more i watch these things the more i find it hard to know what to trust with it 100 percent. and i say all of this whilst being like when it's on i'm like nom 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 nom. give me all the gossip give me all the drama give me all the toxicity but it isn't good and it's also like but i yeah but i'm i'm absolutely addicted and i love it so much would you ever do it would i ever get marry someone that you've never met before no because being married isn't enough of a dream of mine that i would risk anything to do it thing you've got to like you're because you're putting your life on hold for like six months aren't you to do it yeah i think you have to want to be married as an end goal that is sufficiently big enough in your life that you're like this hasn't happened and i want it to happen and marriage isn't that for you no it's not 
It's not. If I get married, that'll be nice. What do you dream about? I know, it's so What's weird. The plan? It's like, what, are my children not going to have a father? Um, <laughs> oh my God. No, I, I don't. I, I want career things, I want travel things, but it's not my, it's not my main goal. Not, See, not marriage, in, I go in and out of because I don't want to be married. I don't, I don't want a big wedding, but I like the idea of like having someone go like, I'm committing to you. Like, oh, I love you fully. To, but I don't think it's a marriage that I want. I think it's just someone who really loves me and that I love back. Let That's me, really sad, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. I was just about to say, I was just about to say, let me be clear. I am a serial monogamist. Yeah. I am terrible like really I don't really know if I could be by myself and that's a terrible thing to be able to say as an adult like I wish that I was certain that I could be but I like to think that if um if I was single again I would give myself more opportunity to prove that to myself yeah but I I don't think that so I am utterly dependent on the affirmation that comes from being in a relationship which is terrible but it's true I love love you know yourself yeah I know at least like I have enough a track record to prove it so let's just admit who I am <laughs> but I but it's not about um a, t- a label it's just about constantly being told I'm pretty oh and somebody making me dinner so you are like Nikita in the first couple of episodes oh my God, I'm not Nikita. <laughs> anyone who does that seen it knows oh that my was a really God. nasty yeah, that's, that's average but yeah they are I would like I get I don't know. I, I'm with you. Like, marriage has never been like a massive goal for me. I never grew up thinking like, oh, the bride. I want to be a bride. Like, I didn't get that. Same. I definitely do have. I'm ambitious in other ways, but I wouldn't say for marriage. But I am. I don't know. I just. But maybe it comes down to the fact that I just I you I see good marriages. I also see lots of bad ones. I've also seen a lot of people settle, and I think because like we all have the option which we're faced with loads of times in our life and we're like, I could just settle for this. I could just go for that. That'll be fine. And then you remind yourself of the song from the last five years, sung wonderfully by Anna Kendrick in the (laughs) movie version, I Can Do Better Than That. Wow. If you haven't heard it, listen to it now. I think it's it's that. It's also, it's two things. It's like one, I... When I was growing up, marriage wasn't didn't looking like an option. It wasn't legal when I was. Yeah. So I, so and for some gay and queer people, that actually I think made marriage a bigger goal, right? It was like unattainable. So the second it was legal, they really wanted it because it was like we thought we'd never have this. Whereas yeah. to me, it was sort of it sort of undermined its value to me. I was like, oh, it's just a n- random thing people can make absurd rules about, and yeah. it's not it's not definitional of our love. So that diminished it for me, I think. And the other thing is like, you'd be a nightmare. Sorry. I thought that's what you were going to say. No, no, Could not. you imagine her as a bride? It'd be... A, okay, go on. No, it's actually just... I find it really private. Like, I find it really weird to be like, everyone should come to hear me profess feelings for my private... Feelings for my private person. It's my private person. <laughs> this is quite a common thing on TikTok. People, like, gay TikTokers will be like, oh, I'm really, like, not comfortable kissing a man in front of my family. No, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, to be clear, it's not that. It's, it's not. not. It's not that I would have a problem kissing a, a woman in front of my family. No, 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 no. I I, I would honestly neck my but girlfriend in front of my mom. people to fly over to The idea you. of them coming to hear me profess my feelings to oh, anyone right. sincerely, that's my issue. See. Oh, God, no. That's no, that's, that part's fine. If yeah, anything, yeah, I'd be like, fuck got... you, enjoy it. But, no, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Pull up a seat in the room, mum. Yeah. Just watch. No, I'm not, a self, I'm, not, I'm not a self-loathing gay. I'm just... I just can't imagine being that sincere in front of people publicly. How about publicly. if we do both decide to get married, we do it Bride Wars style. Have you seen that film? Oh, I could get into that. So we get married at the plaza in yes. June on the same day. Yes. And then basically we're fighting Did over Kate guest Hudson. lists. Who's, who's Kate Hudson and who's Anne Hathaway? I think unfortunately it's the other way around. I think I might be a bit of an Anne. I think you are. Damn That's it. not unfortunate. Why is that unfortunate? Oh, yeah, because your marriage doesn't work out. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Kate gets married and doesn't. <laughs> That's because blondes yeah. have more chance of success in marriage. That's true. Is how the saying right. actually goes. But, but yeah. This is, I, this is what I was going to go back to about married at first sight is there's this weird presupposition from the beginning. Presupposition? Yeah. Is that a word? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, why do we need to check with Andrew? Yes, the word. Um, is for me is that is that marriage must be it takes loads of work it's going to be all about compromise and that there's like it doesn't really it's not necessarily about being happy it's about making it happy and making it work so like it it doesn't matter as long as it functions regardless of individual happiness and i'm like 
Ooh, that sounds horrid. I think that's because we are all unwilling to compromise to oh, a yeah. certain level. And also, I think our generation has such optionality. So it's like getting a partner to me feels a bit like it feels more like shopping online than it should. Like, yeah. like, it feels like there's so many options that the idea of settling is so hard when actually... There has isn't to be... that awful that I look at loads of marriages and go, they're settling? But they're not. They're really happily yeah. in love. And also, but like, it's me being like, that. they can't have found that thing because I can't find it. And loads of other people can't find it. How have they... But then it's like, no, no, they really do. Yeah. And also, like, actually, those compromises, I don't think, feel like big compromises when you're with a person you love. Because yeah, you're like, it's so true. Because you do enjoy making them happy as much as you enjoy being it's happy. so true. So I think probably... Think the times that I've been like completely head over heels in love which has only been like once or twice yeah. and like yeah you do bend over backwards and like all your okay, time is Helen. their time literally <laughs> literally yeah so I mean I don't think we're having a very romantic stance on it but I think I do think um, I also think let's face it Married at First Sight is great television because those experts are terrible at pairing people but that's why they could so try good harder. They could they try know exactly harder. They know what they're doing to get good TV. Yeah, yeah. Those people are not paired based on what makes sense. What about Taya? She's doing well. But then Taya and Adam don't follow each other on Instagram now, so I don't think that's worked out. Are you fucking kidding me? No. Spoilers. Sorry, but what does that mean? It doesn't see, mean this is why I don't follow them on Instagram. It doesn't mean that they. No, I don't follow them on Instagram you have either. To wait but to I the Google end. to see if they do, and I don't know that that means that they've definitely failed. But it feels like that means they've failed, right? I think and, you usually follow your partner on Instagram. Last yeah, year's thought like a given. I think, I think so too. I think so too. Anyway, enough about Married at First Sight. If you don't watch it, this is going to be like, what? Why are they going on about it? But I kind of so want someone good. to send us a marriage problem for a week to come. Me too. I also feel like if you're listening to this podcast and you don't watch Married at First Sight you should be because you'd love it yeah like uh, or you're mm. or you're having a terrible time mm. listening to this podcast mm. <laughs> i mm. will say if you are going to send in marriage problems though maybe not like ones that need marriage counseling do you think that's too serious what do you no, mean Andrew? i think 100 yeah. percent send us marriage Andrew. counseling <laughs> how dare you we're trusty hogs no, we can sort it out Okay. I understand Sorry. marriage wow. through and through. Way to be undermined I've, by the receptionist I've at been the therapy to over, office i've been wow. to over five weddings <laughs> I just feel Imagine like... being a therapist and your receptionist coming in going, it seems like a serious problem. I don't think you can handle it. <laughs> no, <it's not laughs> How that. dare I... you, Andrew? Book them in. Book them in. I... Get them on the couch. Okay. We're, we can do that. And Helen, we can I'm, do this. I'm, I'm with you. I think we are best placed to handle marriage questions. How dare you? Okay, but if, if there's any trusty hogs divorces, uh, I'm not claiming well, any then... emotional responsibility. I will. I'll I have am. all the emotional They weren't meant to be married. We told them what they did to do and they did the right thing. Okay, yeah, that's a fair point. Any I'm advice sorry, you I'm do sorry. ask us will be like, end the marriage. <laughs> well, feel... Andrew, that was just... A... That was so unhelpful. Like legal... Okay, now we're all yeah, fighting again. I think we yeah, just calm sorry, down. Sorry, sorry, yeah, okay. I'm just thinking, what if we get sued by a divorcee? That's not going to happen. Andrew, you've really catastrophized there. Yeah. Although, I... what court would Why we get sued? Case? Oh, Judge Rinderwood. <laughs> yeah, but like... That would be good PR, actually. I think you get a £1,000 to appear on Judge Rinder okay, as well. Take it back. So, so we have a good problem. Yeah. Get divorced. Sue us on Judge Rinder. If we do Judge Rinder, we'll stop asking you to yeah, sign yeah. up for our Patreon for a week. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Andrew, let's be realistic. If that was a thing the courts heard, how many girlfriends who had had too much Prosecco would be sued by the partners of those women who are like, she came home and she wanted a divorce because all the girls are like, lay them, lay them, lay them. Oh my God, them. you love my nights out. I do. This is the thing. I really Just do. Just being all my mates being like, you can do better, you can do better, Time you can do better. Settle. <laughs> like from three single and happy women. <laughs> yeah. uh, do not settle. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, Andrew, fuck you, we can handle it. Bring on your marriage <laughs> question. <laughs> Hello. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to be our patrons on Patreon. We're so grateful. We finally hit 50 patrons. You know that I check it like every day. <laughs> like I refresh the link tree. Oh, yeah. it's so sweet. <laughs> Honestly, this podcast has been a labor of love and it has, we had to put some money into it at the start. And obviously we are finally, we're, with 50 patrons, we are, patrons, I don't know which one to say. Patrons. Yeah, with 50 patrons, we're able to cover the cost of renting the studio, which is so exciting. We we're not losing money We're not talking. losing any money now. Yay. <laughs> what we'd absolutely love to do is make money because then we could do things like put on live shows and have 
guests that get paid and maybe even make some money from this job. But Eventually hey, pay ourselves. Yeah, but that's, that, don't, let's not stress about that. We just want to say thank you for those of you who have donated. And if you're enjoying the podcast and you could spare three quid a month, so like the price of a coffee or five quid, we will give you things in compensation. What do we give them, Andrew? Like lots of great things for three mm. qu- Yeah, For three quid, you get 24 hour early access. Nice. You can get all the goss ahead of everyone else. Love yes, it. Please. For five pounds, you get a whole extra episode. What? See, yes. I think that's the one to go for. It's such a good bargain. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, so a coffee is what, like three pounds? Yeah. And then a coffee and a pastry, just don't do that one day a week yeah. and then you're covered for the full month. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, please. And it's four, it's four episodes a month, basically, because we, we have extra, extra content extra from every episode. That's so good. And Holy then shit. if you're like, feeling very generous and you want to give us 10 quid a month, what do you get? Uh, 48 hour early access to booking tickets for live events. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, and uh, 10% off merch, which is coming soon. Yes, <gasps> and all of the above as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you get everything the, yeah. the lower funds get you as well. And then there are higher tiers of Patreon, which we really appreciate if anyone is able to afford them. Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. we don't know your financial details. We want to. Yeah, tell but us. we don't. We do. But thank you so much for everyone that has helped so far. I find the sincerity so difficult. I know, it's so hard. But, but it honestly, means so much. The next goal is obviously to get to 100 patrons. So that's our goal. Please, 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 if you can't afford to give us any money, the best thing you could do for us is like, subscribe, and please tell five friends about the podcast because that also helps us I feel massively. like that's the best thing because that's how I get all my podcasts that oh, I love is someone amazing. going, you have to listen to this. It's so, so good. Okay. So if you can just like mention it when you're out and about, be like, oh, I love this podcast. Yeah. Like shout about it. Then we get more listeners. Tweet we, about we can it. Do more with it. All that. Yes, please. Okay, sincerity over. You're all the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most aggressive thing noise yet. Yeah. Was, was it? It was intense. That felt like it one of my intense. cuter ones. No, you made full eye contact with me and I hated it. Hi. Hi. I was Hi. not ready for that. It's okay. We're here. We're here. We have a, we have a guest. Hey, well, don't stop that. We have a guest here. <gasps> Hello. Oh, oh my God. God. Who is it? It's me, Fern Brady. No, it's no, you, Fern yeah, Brady. I, I was like, It was like a little thing I thought would be really, really cute. Because it's like we're getting towards <laughs> panto season. So I thought like... Uh, but also, you know, this September. is being filmed so they can see who it is if they're watching on YouTube. Yeah, but if they're not watching on YouTube. Okay, that's true. Who is it? It's Fern Brady. Hi, I'll Fern. give you five clues. It's too late. It's too late. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, Very how are you happy. feeling? Um, Very happy. happy. To be one of the first guests in what will inevitably be a huge podcast. Oh, Stop. what a flirt. Oh, She's a flirt. What could happen is we fall out so epically that it all goes down in flames. You I reckon I. we could have that. Yeah. I don't think I take you seriously enough to fall out with you. Really? Yeah. I could see it for us, like wrestling to the death. I think that would just end in sex. Even then it could just be a live podcast event, couldn't it? I suppose uh, so. Yeah. We'd have that. Um, do, you, do you not just, um, what me and Alison do with our podcast is we just uh, save up all our chats for each week um, to try and... Oh, you mean you don't maintain a friendship outside of it anymore? Uh, well, we do when we're not... <laughs> I've noticed I've been hanging out with her more since we've not been recording the podcast. Yeah, because you don't want to spoil all your good stuff. Well, a lot of times we're like, oh, do you know what? I'll just tell you this on the podcast. <laughs> so it's I feel like you've tried to, to do that with me, but that. we're yet to run out of chat. Yeah, but I also think that I do that sometimes because you take a really long time on phone calls. I do. I, I have, do love I have to go. I have to go. So I just say, let's do it on the podcast. Mm. That, um, wow. Yeah. Wow. So Fern, how's your week been? Uh, good. What have I done this week? Well, today's only Tuesday, so okay, not yeah. much. Uh, go back seven days in your mind then. My cat, I had to take my cat to the groomer because he'd been sucking on his chest here, probably because he's so what? depressed from <laughs> living with me. Um, <laughs> Wait, you mean like bending over and like sucking like... He s- likes to suck on his chest here and um, like if he dribbles any milk into it, he sucks the milk out of it. It's really sad. Is that like sucking chocolate out of your top when you get a little bit on your t-shirt? But yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The top is your skin. Yeah, I don't want to cast any aspersions, but based on your Instagram presence, you seem like a needy cat owner? Well, I'm a dog person, so yeah. I'm not a cat owner, uh, really. Um, I got the cat because I wasn't allowed a dog. Yeah. Um, and he does he does get stressed out from being with me, whereas my boyfriend's more a cat person that just leaves him to do his thing. Yeah. I still don't understand why your cat is sucking itself off, but just using fur. No, he no, doesn't, doesn't suck his dick. He sucks his chest It still feels here. like a pleasurable thing. Um, like there's things you can do to yourself that are pleasurable that aren't anything to do with like your genitals. Like you know when you play with your ear. So you never play with your tits. You never pull at your tits. You never do. Oh, any- yeah. Exactly. So come yeah, on. Yeah, she said she does it at parties and stuff. And yeah. Everyone one. Just tip. standing in the corner. 
Exactly. For the, for the <laughs> listener, Helen held her tits and put her tongue out and stared to the sky. Should you be was. wondering what it was? No, but I know what you mean. Um, I have a question and I... I feel like I've asked you this by messenger, but I'm just going to be open. Because I texted you beforehand to say, can we talk about this? And you made a good point, which was like, there shouldn't be a taboo around it. Uh-huh. But I I think I maybe, I think I'm obsessed about getting Botox for long enough that I think I should probably just try it and see if it's any good for me. Mm. But recommend? There's a, well, there's a whole other world of injectables out there. And uh, Botox isn't great if you want to emote uh, during your stand-up show. Yeah. So the first time I had it, she did there was too much she did too much okay and uh i had a lovely shiny robot head for the full summer yeah but i do worry about that i tried to look up at the sun um as it started to kick in and i nearly fell backwards because <laughs> you need you need your eyebrows to move to look up at the sun so you just, oh like, wow you have to tell your whole body back and then you just <laughs> fall okay, over okay this is a good argument against and the thing is I'm, I should say I'm a person who has been thinking about this for ages and I go between like I don't need it I'm a feminist or something and then but you, you, you don't because your face is nice but then I also we have to see ourselves so fucking much that I just obsess about yeah tiny things and then I also get scared so then I'm like but what if I get like botched and I don't want to be on a reality TV show for that reason so I think that's why you want to get Botox is the chance of getting on there does sound like a risk that is it's like there's a jeopardy there that seems exciting like I get a lot of piercings for the same reason it's like oh no no look the way people get botched is they go to a woman that comes around your house that's done a certificate and how okay. it's, nice to be at home. it's nice to be at home no, I get it. or they go to botox parties or stuff when you see botox bad job, parties. Yeah. it's because people have have not paid very much money for it you okay. want to go to a dentist or a doctor someone who knows where all the nerves are in okay place. um so i go to someone proper um and what i've never get? Had, I had Profilo last week, but it's, um, you get two sessions of that. Okay. Because uh, Joanne McNally was like, get Profilo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is Profilo? Allow me to be oh clear, that's a very bad impression of Joanne it McNally. Bad. Get Profilo. <laughs> that's really, that that's like actively bad. Cut that out, no, so frightened keep of her. Keep it in, keep it in, keep it in. She's not as frightening as she seems. Also, she's actually, she's the nicest. Well. She's the anyway, nicest. Joanne didn't even say it to me. She messaged me on Instagram, but I imagined her saying, get Profilo. Oh, I read some people's messages in their voice. I do that with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, but it's, <laughs> it's also, but profile is just like uh, you could get it at any age, and it's it's just like they inject hyaluronic acid into your skin. It's like a moisturizer on your skin. See, so then you glow through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If okay. You look at Joanne's face. I'll be honest. I already messaged the person who did. Um, Joanne's because she makes this constant joke she calls it profiterol and mm. so I messaged him and just said look do I have to forever hanker after Joanne's skin or can we get profiteroles to go what's the deal and he messaged me back to be like lol let's do it but then I got chicken I got scared mm. I get I got scared but that one wears off doesn't back. it like it gets injected in and then it's it all like, wears off yeah. it's all okay. melting in your face so I want okay. to not get these things done um because I want to get a flat in Glasgow, so that's how I'm trying to stop myself from doing it. They are expensive. Like, have things that melt in your face or have a property in Glasgow. Okay, well, this, so- is, this isn't the sales pitch I was expecting from you. I actively, actively um, feel more like I won't get it now. Well, you're saying you're scared. Everyone feels weird about it the first time. And then after that, you're just like, this is great. Why is everyone lying to me about it? And I'll tell you why. Because you're buying a status... Um, Basically, but where do I start with this? I did this program recently where I was talking to this woman about uh, stereotypes of Essex girls. The yeah. the woman was an expert on witchcraft and witch trials. What witch trials in Essex? She said that when it used to just be aristocrats who wore makeup, yeah. and then when working class women started wearing makeup, that was when people had a problem with it, and that was when they started trying <gasps> pretty glamorous women for witchcraft because you're seen to be taking a status that isn't yours. Shut and if you up. think about it with like Love Island women, there was some Love Island women who had a load of plastic yeah. surgery, and the press were really annoyed yeah. because... Yeah. If you're a working class woman, really one of your, I mean, you don't have social networks, you don't have like mm-hmm. a bunch of people from school that are gonna give you a job. All you have is your looks. So if you buy good looks, 
um, you're sort of taking this status that you don't. Oh my God, I'd never thought about that. That's so really that's the way I think about it. And the way I do I, think yeah. it's also about a faux feminism. So I think that like people don't want us to fetishize youth, but simultaneously do, and then punish women for being held to the same to a standard that they continue to abide by. So it's like we actively make beauty definitional with things with all things youthful thinness um like cl- like basically unmoving faces mm-hmm. um and clear skin and then when women are like hi i've noticed this intense beauty standard i think i might try to adhere to it people are like you fucking weak bit yeah <laughs> the weakness the weakness the generalization of like women all want this like we're all different we all oh, want sorry, different yes, things absolutely. Like, it's pure fucking mad what i mean to say is that women are the ones who are judged harshly by it yeah, right yeah, yeah. and i also think it's interesting that like we we really don't like the idea that people buy beauty Mm-hmm. It's like we want beauty to be this intrinsically natural, mm-hmm. wondrous thing that you like that makes you special yeah. as opposed to like it's just as random to be born with it as it is to have the money to buy it. Mm-hmm. But we're like, 100%. but one is special and one makes you an idiot. It's frustrating. Okay, fuck it. I'm in. Let's all get Botox together. No, <laughs> no I'm no. in. And all of a sudden, it's just suddenly changed for me. This is a Botox party. I, basically, I was raised by a mother who was like, you want to have some lines because it shows you've lived. I love so that. She was always like, mm. if you get to the age of like 40, even 30, and you have any lines in your face, short shows you've never cried, you've never laughed, yeah. which I think is maybe more her generation sort of a thing. But it's interesting. No, but I do think the influences around you affect you. Like, I think a lot of comedians, female comedians on television, look incredibly glamorous. And we're coming up in a time in comedy where I do feel under pressure to look a certain way as a yeah, female man. comic. Yeah. Where- well, because the, the, um, the, the Daily Mash, the Mash Report, all yeah. the women on it, including you, are so beautiful. Thank oh my you. God, Stevie Martin, her, she looked amazing. She's Didn't so she? Good. She looked incredible. Yeah, she like, looked incredible. She's already got a lovely, cute face, but the makeup was, just was so good. She also. looked amazing. The 60s um, vibe was gorgeous. I also thought she was funny. <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Oh, nice it. dress. It, it, Whoa, it, it, who cares? <laughs> you're talking about your mum um, being, being raised by a mum that said about wrinkle lines. I was saying to you the other day, I very um, unusually, apparently, from what I hear off other women, my mum never raised me being weird about food. She, mm-hmm. My mum only wore makeup like once a year or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says that it really saddens her how much I care about looks now. And it all started, um, I remember at the uh, So You Think You're Funny final, um, as everything begins, every yeah. bloody guy, every <laughs> bloody guy. Um, I, I, I was um, joint uh, runner-up with Lucy Beaumont. Congratulations. Tiny, beautiful blonde. Yeah. And then um, the review of it was like, um, Lucy Beaumont twinkles on stage, so petite and so lovely. That was like Bennett's <laughs> review, because you could tell when he fancied someone. Oh, yeah. And then it was like, very pretty lumbers on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Big unit, big Scottish beast. And then the picture of me, because I was like fatter when I started comedy, so the picture, I just looked like this fat melted candle and I was wearing like this. I think this. I think this is the problem, right? There's two things. One, <laughs> nobody can take a good photo of anybody doing stand-up. It's always from under your chin. It's always you pulling the worst faces because you're doing an impression of yourself, shaving your pubes or whatever your bit is that night. And it's like, obviously look horrendous. The second thing is though, it's so many photos. Like yeah. I've, I don't have my photo. Like no other job have I ever had where it's like no. pretty much weekly. Somebody takes your photo, mm. and then it gets published somewhere. And it's really hard not to engage with that. But I, I do. I think... really want a copy of that review. I'm no, sorry, me that's too. Could so we frame funny. it? It's on yeah. Charo. It's on Charo, man. Yeah. It's just I remember like... I got reviewed for something, and you were emceeing it. It was the 99 Club bursary. Okay. Which is like it's just sort of like women are non-binary comedians, and we're all doing like our best sets to try and win 500 pounds to go towards our Edinburgh debut, which is like a really big help. And um, they reviewed it, sort of a thing. I think I came joint winner with Janine Haruni, and um, the review was of everyone's material. And then for me, they were like, Helen's tall, like, <laughs> like, like uh, Miranda or B- Brienne of Tarth. She's a tall one. <laughs> Isn't it? Do you not, like, I, it feels so bad being a tall woman in this country. Like, I love when I go to Holland or 
Scandinavia and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you always, you just feel like, I don't know, not as, I don't know, I, I've always felt a bit um, self-conscious. But I either people. feel tall or too short, because I also spend half the time having people go like, you're not six foot, you're not six one, and being like, no, I am. Like, I don't, I, What a weird like, thing to keep saying. It's yeah. battle. I don't like, have, mine isn't the same, but I, the only equivalent I have of that is like, but you're not Irish. And you're like, uh, why, why would I make it up? Why would I make that, <laughs> but you're, you're American, and you're like, no. But you've been not a bit like yeah, but you've been you've raised there. Why are we do- no? Why are we doing this? You it's so don't tedious. Have one of those American Dublin accents. Is that? But what lots you of don't. people think I do. Lots of people think I do. No, it, it's really odd. So I would say it was like a Trinity accent. Oh my God, Fern Wait, knows. What, is that Fern knows her Irish shade. Trinity <laughs> <is> normal people. <laughs> isn't it? Like, that's the normal people. Yeah, that's the normal people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My boyfriend went there and uh, he switches between his Trinity accent and then like mm. as a treat he does his Galway. <laughs> as a treat. <laughs> You like talk like a sort of farmer and uh, talk there's, really fast. It's really funny. There's real, there's specific words that if you're into an Irish accent, like people love. So, Shefton. Yeah, or like just sounds like my my girlfriend oh. loves cloth or yeah. orange. She's just like, oh. Cloth. Yeah. Cloth. Again. Cloth. cloth. You also add in sh sounds where there shouldn't be um, words. Uh, like if you were saying that S, a word that starts with S T. My boyfriend's mum will say Ashta. Instead of st. I would just stop. That's it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so annoying that one. <laughs> um, okay, well we're some, celebrating fun. Obviously I, not a not a kink of ferns, that's fine. <laughs> but it would be weird if you found your bro- boyfriend's mom's voice sexy, I guess. Well, I should add that she's um English, which he hid from me till I met her. So that's why it's especially weird that she has this sort of Englishy Irish. Oh, okay. I don't have any time for that to be fair. Yeah. It's like, Maybe she was trying either. to fit in. I think nah. so, well, so her parents That's a no were from Irish. Me. So he gets very upset when I say she's English and he's like, they just moved over, they had her in England, then they moved back. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's some traitor talk if you ask me. Um, Fern, we have a problem from a listener. Well, oh, cool. the problem is, is that Catherine wants Botox, but she's too scared to go through. <laughs> <laughs> that but also, she hates herself for it, but also, that's not what I've emailed She in. has an identical position to me in that we're just players in a game. Um, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. you have to compete with everyone else. I just think we all have one plastic surgery procedure, which is the one that we'd want. For yeah. me, Boob lift. Oh, I've really? I've got the 20, rock. I've got the meat. I just need the lift. <laughs> Quite a big operation. Yeah, right? that's a big but one. I just, I figured they could just like grab some skin and pin it. No, they, you have end up with an anchor scar underneath though, which can be yes. quite intense. Yeah. So from nipple down on either side, you're gonna have a, a big scar. I can't. Oh, I see. But I they can like heal pretty well. They're Me pretty too, and they're pretty sexy. Edgy. Yeah. You know I, mean? I don't know about edgy, but they're sexy. But mm. it is like it's a big difference to your body. Oh man. And yeah, also, I'll just have buy you ever a nice seen? Bra. Also, sometimes don't you like leak from your nipples and stuff when they get wounds? What? Ugh. I've looked into this. Anyway, um, I don't know why. I have no boobs what to be comes lifting. Out of I have no meat. Pus. And blood, yeah. Yeah, I think I quite like that. A pussy nipple. <gasps> As something to play with at home. That's a no I for enjoy me. a spot, so I think that would be like. No, that's why I had to take out my nipple ring because I couldn't deal with any sort of. I know. I don't know. have one it's any, I don't minging, have anymore. It? <laughs> okay, first of all, this doesn't feel like a safe space anymore. But second, she it never did. It never did. <laughs> I had my nipple pierced, but I just couldn't <laughs> deal with the upkeep. That's mad. Why? Well, you're not a member of Take That in the 90s <laughs> or something. Like, she what? could have been. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. I wear a lot of vests. You don't know. Um, are we... Do, but Andrew's going to read us uh, the problem, and then we're going to oh, help, yeah, try on, to help them. But I also think Andrew should say which one of us needs Botox. I will not be playing this game. <laughs> um, <laughs> now go on, man. Tell us. <laughs> I, I, I it's become... a trick question. We all need it. We're disgusting. <laughs> Let's I go. It, I'd get it on one side so I could really see the effects. <laughs> oh, just <laughs> one after yeah. that. Can we agree that this is all nonsense? Like that we know it's all externally imposed nonsense? Because throughout this conversation, all we do is come back to our own bodies. So we don't give a shit about anyone else. Absolutely. Well, I just want to be like Mary and Margulies. Mm-hmm. Um, I never know if it's Margoyles or Margulies. I think it's Margulies. I think, I think it, it is Margulies. I really do. I met her in a pound land sure. once. So what? I no, you didn't. Yeah. What? what? But, but is it pound land or poundland? Poundland. Okay. 
me or you would get on because my um someone I know at the BBC said that Maria Margulies likes to introduce herself by flopping one tit on the table. Ah, uh, that's a hell of a move. Yeah. No, I met. I was working in a cafe in Ballam, and there was a regular customer who had just got a puppy, and we were all like young women working there, so we were like, "You can have everything for free, and we'll look after your puppy." <laughs> so we were like taking care of his puppy all the time. So I went into Poundland to get something for the cafe, and I had the little puppy with me because health and safety first. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam was in the queue just before me and she went, oh, God, what a precious thing. Oh and then that was God. there. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. It was so good. <laughs> amazing. Like, she is. I love that she's getting, she seems to be in the press more and more. And yeah. Like her, episode of the Louis Theroux podcast I was screaming that's the laughing. only episode of Louis Theroux I've ever listened to someone recommended yeah. it to me and I was like fuck it I'm doing it it was, it was great. so good yeah. yeah it's great she's so great she talks about how um, poor for fart <laughs> 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 Think how like no one, no one of our age or younger would ever talk about something like this in this way. It would all be a discussion centered around trauma and stuff. Yeah. She said that a guy, a soldier, was wanking at her from up in a tree and a uh, meadow. <laughs> it's the Edinburgh. famous one she does on the Graham Norton show. Okay. And she, so she gave him a hand job. <laughs> She likes wow. to help the troops. Yeah. Wow. He was in the two. Wow. Yeah. Well, on that note, let's help somebody yeah, else. Yeah, let's help someone else. <laughs> As Miriam would want okay. us to. Uh, go on then, Andrew. Tell us Tell us the email. Read yes. us the email. Who's it from? Uh, this is from D. D. We like okay. to do initials to keep it anonymous. Okay, we'll have a message from D. Let's hear it. So D has been seeing a guy recently. Okay, is That's D a D? guy? Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. That that that, that will become evident. But okay. D is a guy. D is a guy, a guy. He's seeing a guy. Okay. Uh, very casually. Um, but okay. It's been made clear by the guy he's seeing that um, he's probably not ready for a relationship because he's not fully out to his family and friends. But D would like a relationship, but doesn't see anything in the near future. Does he persist and help him come out, or do you kind of cut your losses, as it were? Oof. Sorry. I'm slow. Can you say that again? So yeah. this the guy has seen someone. He's seen this guy casually, mm. and this guy said, "I'm not ready for a relationship because I'm not out to my family yet." Mm. But but D would like to have a relationship with him. So does he leave it, or does he help him come out to his family and persist? And then, the thing is, I think he's setting himself up for a huge rejection. So which is to say that if it doesn't work out, which is like just as likely or this guy doesn't want to come out, or he helps him come out and then it doesn't go his way. I think you, you're creating a huge level of, of investment. And I think people tell you who they are and they mean what they say. Like, if someone's saying to you, I'm not ready for a relationship, they're not ready for a relationship because yeah. there's another voice in them that always wants to people please. There's another voice in them that obviously likes you because they're spending time with you. And they've right. pushed through those things to say, I'm not ready for a relationship. I think you should take it at face value. Yeah, and all the shame involved that they're going to associate that with you if they haven't come out to their yeah. family. Yeah. yeah. But I will say there is something like for this D person, when you fancy someone and you really like where it's going and they say, we can't cross this barrier, everything in your brain goes, well, let's deal with this barrier together. together. It's that movie <laughs> feeling, isn't it? Hold my hand. Let's walk to the sunset. We can do anything together. But I don't think people can come out for. No, they, they but can't. I don't think That's they should come thing. out for you. I think they have to come out for themselves. And also, like, sidebar: Why haven't they come out to their family? Do they are they not totally comfortable with their sexuality? Is it their family's fault? What's the vibe? Yeah, uh, it was quite a long email. So I, th I think um, the vibe is that he's uh, kind of only freshly realised his sexuality. He's told some friends, but not all of his family and cl and some close friends. I think well. then being like freshly realizing a sexuality is a difficult thing to get into a relationship because you're still wanting to explore it. I think like, let's just make a grand assumption that if it's new to the sexuality, D might be the first time yeah. this man's ever been with another man. Or like, like theory, yeah. there is that sort of thing of like you want to try the whole pick and mix. That's like just getting the minstrels. I also just I'm the I'm the I say this like with love, but I've been the biggest culprit of not believing what people have told me about themselves at the start because I've just been like I'll just project what I want from you onto you instead. And then when they break up with me or I break up with them years later, it's like every sign was there. They told me this would happen in their actions at the time, and I just chose to believe yeah. I was special. So like. That's an Oprah thing. People tell you who they are. Oh, when people tell you who you are, they are, you should believe them. Although when I dated girls, I used to, I didn't want to tell them that I wasn't um, out of my family. So I would just make up stories about how accepting my family was. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking sad. It was, it was really, it's really what? fucked. What? 
I and I, I like, oh, fuck. Um, I, I was dating this girl that had a androgynous name. Um, uh, that's not the word for it, is it? Could have been a boy or a girl's name. Yeah. And my mum saw her name on my phone and was like, oh, who's so and so? Um, and I, I just did it. I had like so many opportunities to say, and I just did it. And all the, the, the sort of like embarrassment and the. Every time I went out with a girl, the the embarrassment around it and the um, conflict I felt just got in the way a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I think that's not an easy journey that gets resolved real fast. And I think, look, you can absolutely be like, I'm in this, and maybe they'll change their mind. But I don't think you can be like, should I stick with it and help them come out? They have to do that by themselves, yeah. and it's going to be complex. So you can be there for it, but I don't think you can decide. I don't think you can. I think you should take what they're saying at face value. Yeah, that's my opinion. But w- it sucks. It be, but like, leave it. Would it be wrong to like just carry on like casually hanging out and having but fun? But I think at the point at which you're asking this conversation, this question, and you're emailing, let's face it, three random homosexuals and Helen <laughs> about about it. You you obviously care more than casually. Would we say? Mm. I think so. Um, I I've got a friend who's had uh women use her as an experiment over and over again she's uh, happily yeah. engaged now but every time what the women do is keep you on the side and like mm. keep uh you're like this sort of secret thing and then just dispose of you when they feel like it see I, I don't know if that's still a common thing because more young people seem to be okay with saying they're uh, bi or queer now yeah so is it is it are, are people still like that i don't i think i would say that i'm not a very good example because i would i generally wasn't used as a starter gay i think i mean i think i was maybe like some people's realization insofar as they were like oh well if you can have long hair maybe i could be but i generally wasn't used as an experiment because i don't think i seem gay enough for that maybe no yeah no i'd say it, Do you know it what happens I mean? more with um there's some uh, gay women where it's like their their type is uh, closeted by women. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just a, te- a terrible pattern to get. That's into. the thing. I've never redated femmes, so it wasn't really an issue. Right. Yeah. But that's not me to stare. I'm just stare- that's a sweeping generalization I, <laughs> there. I had it quite a lot at school. I say a lot, like three times. Like, that's a lot for school. Yeah, that is a lot. Uh, and yeah, they're now the all three guys are now quote unquote straight. So, yeah. Honestly, I thought I was like the most effective conversion therapy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, I do you know what happened to a friend of mine when he was at school as well. Sort of like a guy who was like straight and was like going out with like a girl at our school, sort of a thing. But they were also like messing around on the side. I mean, I say all of this. I, my first girlfriend never said she was bi yeah. always said she was straight and just liked me and then was straight thereafter I believe well I I think I'm heteroromantic but bisexual and I, that's a really great thing I've learned from younger people because I wish I'd had the language to say that when I was younger instead of thinking of myself as a shitty bisexual because I was like I do keep having sex with women yeah. and I like that part yeah. but I'm much more prepared to humiliate myself for men Oh, I'm the um, inverse, I would think. I kept I, I love having sex with men, but generally have much more romantic feelings for women. Right, yeah. So and my my best friend describes herself as gay, but she she she's occasionally had sex with men. Yeah. And she says, Oh, but just to be debo- debauched. <laughs> That's how she describes it. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, And you only have sex with women to be debauched. And I was and now I've learned like the right words for it. Yeah. yeah. Um because I definitely wasn't doing it as an experiment. I did it too many times for it to yeah. be an experiment. The theory had been proven and yet yeah, you persisted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, don't, I, I wouldn't really feel, I don't think I would feel, room. All, all the girls I dated, I, I found them hard work, like yeah. really hard work uh, in terms of how much they needed. <laughs> Thank you. We are hard work, <laughs> but I love that. Yes. Yeah, so oh my god, I, I love it. A lot of gay women like that. Um, oh, the, the drama. dramas. For so, sure. For oh, give me sure. the fucking yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love no. it so much. <laughs> How am I supposed to fuck? 
fucking oh, we haven't sleep. read and cried today. Come on. Oh, I've only on. ever dated mm. men, and mm. I think they've all been straight. I've fallen in love with gay men consistently. Yeah. But like, <laughs> That's why like, I can't fancy someone that doesn't fancy me. I would never Oh, fancy see, I fancy them if they think I'm disgusting, because I'm like, I hate me too. Like, <laughs> I love it. I fucking love no, Helen, it. No, Helen, no. Like, you think I'm disgusting? <laughs> we get along. No. But, like, the lack of drama is so significant. Like, I have to bring the whole thing. I've had to do arguments by myself before <laughs> oh. just to fill some time. Like, just sort of screaming at the street. And they're like, no, no, nothing matters. And I'm like, everything matters! <laughs> and it is frustrating because, like, I'm willing to multi-role. I always have been. I'm very much Cher in that vibe. Like, yeah. my name's Cher, this is West Side Story, and I'll be playing all the parts. Yeah. But sometimes it's, like, just a cameo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, problem solved. Leave it. Leave the relationship. It's not even a relationship. Get over yourself. I, I, oh, wow. I think I would wow. just... I, I, I would just say, protect yourself from hurt. And that's... The hurt sounds inevitable. So to my mind, just say, tell you what, if you do come out and you're more interested in a more serious thing because that's where my head is at with this... I changed my answer. Then I'll be available. That one. But yeah. yeah. I agree. What do you think? Yeah, that was what I was thinking because someone's going to get through to this person one day and help them come out. Yeah, but uh, it's not worth staying in it for you to then just be disposed of quite uh, callously down the line, which could happen. But also, the role that you're describing sounds like that of a friend, mm -hmm. and you don't feel. I don't think D has friendship feelings. I think D take this, this person. person to the zoo and have a good chat. Break Is that where you break up with people at the zoo? Always at the zoo. Which exhibit? Monkeys. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so specific no it's not it's a song you know that song like tell me on a sunday it's this really random musical theater song you bring this up every time like, break up with me at a zoo like where there's chimpanzees and i'm like that's just so fucking lush <laughs> is it yeah oh okay oh you don't want me in that animals throwing shit at the window oh, they God. don't throw shit that much okay they don't they don't <laughs> Brent Brady you've been an excellent guest thank you so much for being here thank you so much for having me thank let's you let's give Brent a round of applause yay I'm clapping at home me too <laughs> thanks Brent thank oh, you oh and obviously listen to Wheel, Wheel of, of Miss Fortune yes where can they find you Fern uh, it's uh, um, I'm on uh, Twitter at Fern Brady and on Instagram at Fern from Bathgate and she'll be like tagged in all our social media and, like, blah, blah, blah. and she looks 21 oh, even yeah. though she's actually secretly 104 insane it's yeah, crazy yeah. it's crazy um, yeah. I think that's also just acting like a little baby uh, <laughs> helps me seem young um, I'm on tour from January the end of January yeah. lots of new dates have been added thanks for the reminder <laughs> yes go to for bikini tour. queen yeah fucking chartle by the way anyway <laughs> we'll deal with that we'll leave it there thank you so much This is exciting. It's happening. Okay, Andrew's going to tell us who are our patrons, Andrew. So there's these, 51 of them. There's 51 of them, and we have uh, uh, 16 producers. And oh two my God, 16 producers! Thank you so much. Executive producers. Two, two Holy executive shit. producers. They basically get to see our tits for the amount of money that they're showing us. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> let's, let's not. Let's not commit to that. Okay. Uh, so our producers, we have the wonderful Lee Myers Co. Oh, thank you. Thank Lee. you. David Walker. Oh, David. David. I love David. Tim and Dom. Tim and Dom. I mean, what? They, sorry, they they're trying to be an exact producer as one person. Uh, so no, producer together. I'm sorry, producer. Are they sharing the producer credit? Uh, only one of them's getting getting the mug. So uh, <gasps> Tim Tim's getting the mug, and if 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 Dom wants a mug, he has to produce it himself as well. Oh, wow, my God. Dom! Wow, Dom! Why do you like maybe be as good as your Thank husband? Thank you so much. All right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. <laughs> it just seems crazy to me that they're trying to share no, a I ticket to the show. I love they're doing it together. I think that's just lush. <laughs> no, I'm. I think it's cute. <laughs> Thank you. We also have the wonderful Kira Leach. Thank you, yes, Kira. Kira. Uh, Richard Bignall. Thank Richard. you, Richard. SB Dubs. SB Dubs. L. 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 Thank you, Al. Like we love Al. L on the ship. Thank you, Al. Richard Balls. Thank you, Rick Balls. Oh. Bald, bald, sorry. Bald. Oh, that makes more Richard. sense. We were like, any cousin of Ed? Thank you, Richard Bald. <laughs> good, that was good. Sadie Cashmore. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Sadie. Neil Redmond. Neil. Oh, Neil, so generous. <laughs> Rachel R. Rachel, Rachel R. R. Thank you, Rachel. I know who that is. Thank you so much. Victoria Hutchison. Victoria, Thank you, Victoria. You sweet baby. Thank Angel. you. Vicky, Vicky. Emma Walton. No, Emma Vicks. Walton. Hi, Emma. Emma Walton. Hi, Emma. You're an angel. Karen Bull. 
Oh, thanks, Karen. Karen. Thank you, Karen. Not all Karens are bad. Doing good things for the Karens. <laughs> Anthony Conway. Thank Anthony. you, Anthony Conway. Thank you. And uh, our final producer, Harold Van Dyke. Oh, Thank Harold you, Harold Van Dyke. Dyke. You're so good. Thank you for supporting us, guys. We so appreciate it. Oh, like, and then our two executives. Two executive yeah, names. Two executives. I mean, we know them. They're in the executive suite. No, that. Simon us. Moore. Simon Moore. Simon and the lovely... Guy Goodman. Guy, Guy Goodman. Goodman. Thank you all Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. All of you. We're so and grateful. And also to the three and five pounds as well. Like, we're super, super grateful. Oh, my God. A hundred percent. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much, all of you. One step closer to the Disneyland Americas. And... <laughs> Okay. Pay my legal fees and then I'm going.